What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers with another episode from the Building a Fleet series and another bomber. Now this is kind of because on the Dan Patter video last week people rightly pointed out that the ship, while very effective and I quite still quite like it, was using quite a lot of space for its cargo network and it could potentially be increased in its potency without necessarily making it that much bigger. So what I have in front of me here is the finished ship but first we're going to take a quick look at the frame that sits inside it. So you can kind of see, if you watch the Dan Patter video, you can see the bits here that have been taken from that sort of layout, the design. It's kind of just one of these corners. So if you picture that bit there, that's about what the Dan Patter's made up of. But it means that with this layout, we've actually been able to repurpose some of the cargo containers to enable us to quadruple the firepower, but without coming anywhere near to quadrupling the size. So, much like with the previous videos, I'm going to start using some pre-recorded clips, but the first thing I wanted to talk about before we did any of that was something that I missed in the previous video, or it looks like I missed in the previous video, which is that none of the turrets were shooting back at these projectiles. That wasn't because they weren't on. It's because, by default, if you go into a turret controls like this one here, they will not actually shoot at moving objects. This is something that's off by default, and there's a reason for that. A moving object is anything that's unknown. It's bits of debris, it's parts of spaceships, and when you have it turned on, turrets behave pretty stupid. They will shoot your own ships a lot more frequently. They will shoot at stuff that doesn't need shooting at. All sorts of stuff like that. But because the projectiles are made purely out of heavy armor, there are no blocks in there with any ownership settings. It counts as a moving object. And what it means is that most turret setups, by default, will not shoot back at these projectiles. They will completely ignore them. And it's one of the main advantages of keeping your projectiles as simple as this. There's no working parts. And because there's no working parts, there's nothing for the turrets to shoot at. However, what I am going to do is show you guys a few clips of what happens when you shoot these projectiles at something that is fighting back, something that does have the moving objects turned on. And we're going to sort of try it against initially something that's pretty straightforward. Large red ship, I stuck a couple of extra turrets on there just to sort of beef it up a bit because to be honest the two turrets it comes with as standard are a bit weak. And then we've got some much much more heavily armoured and much much more heavily defended targets. And as you're starting to see in the background here, it takes quite a lot of firepower to have any impact on these at all. Even when you've got rockets and gatlings pounding away at them, they might stop a few of the first wave of projectiles, maybe one, maybe two, but they'll still impact, still do damage, and the second wave is still coming. They're traveling so quickly that, you know, you've got to, got to understand these are traveling at 104 meters a second, and turrets have got a range of 800 meters. So you have less than eight seconds to shoot these things out of the air, and that's assuming the turrets respond immediately, which they probably won't if you've got them toggled over to onto moving objects. So as you can see, as we start hitting the target again and again, it actually starts shooting itself and spends a lot of time shooting bits of debris that are nearby to the ship instead of worrying about the real targets that are going to be causing the real damage. So it's not a safe solution to just turn moving objects off. So moving on now to sort of some of the characteristics of this. Obviously we've got the two waves of projectiles, one first, one second, designed to increase the penetration on this design. With the extra projectiles we've got here, you can safely split them up and not only does it mean that the rear projectiles obviously have a slightly higher survival chance, but also you've got this sort of double penetration that really does do some pretty severe damage. You, you know, we tried shooting this at the red ship. The other black ship in this is the one out of my next-gen carrier. It's one of the engine nacelles, completely heavy armor, very, very tough. And then finally, we've got the command bomber, which, okay, it doesn't have any turrets on it. I wanted to give an armor comparison versus what you saw in the previous video from the Dan Patter, so you can see quite how much the damage difference is. But that's got five thick layers of heavy armor on the front of it, and these things go through it like butter. They make a huge mess, and you can see how a small ship could potentially cause some pretty severe crippling damage to large ships with only a couple of attack runs. So the last thing I want to do before finishing up is kind of give a bit of a live fire demonstration, partly because that way you guys can see that there's no trickery or video editing or anything behind this, this is just me wanting to make it look nice and cool, but also so that I can show you how to actually use it if you fancy going out and giving it a try yourself. So first step can be done from either view, we're just going to hit one, and as you'll see this will start welding up the sort of projectors and the projections that are above us. Let's see if I can get back into the cockpit view because it's actually quite nice from in here, so if I hit one. See the whole welding procedure, this takes about four seconds, I, I would say. 
four or five seconds, and at the end of it, they're all locked, ready to go. The only caveat is that needs to be done when you're stationary. That's the age-old projector problem. They don't like moving. So we've got our projections loaded, everything's ready to go. So let's jump to the camera view to help us target a little bit better. We're fully zoomed in here, and we're gonna shoot at that NGC engine in the cell that we've sort of mentioned before. And this time the turrets are gonna be off. You guys have seen that this works against something with turrets on now. No point for this test. It means that I can get up nice and close and have a look at the damage afterwards. So we're lined up on the target, and all we're gonna do now, exit the camera view, and we're gonna accelerate and turn our dampers off. Now you could time the whole thing, you could automate this whole process, but I kind of prefer having an extra element of control over when things release and just exactly how it all works without having to play with timers. So now we're up at full speed and I'm just going to hit 2 and that's going to start the release process and as soon as we see that the landing gear is locked changes to 4, we hit the dampers ourselves and that starts to slow us down and separate those two waves. And depending on how early you hit the dampers can dictate how far apart those two waves are. So if we just shut off the vision here, I'm gonna keep following in. We, of course, should be flying off in another direction now. We had plenty of time to adjust our path before we got into turret range. But just so we can have a look at the impact, there we go. So that was the twin waves look like they arrived together. And I can already see from this distance that we have punched a hole straight the way through it. So let's get up and have a bit of a closer look. But remember, this is something that's it's 18 million kilograms. It's heavy armor through and through, and we have punched a huge hole straight the way through the ship. Any components that were in the way here obviously have been destroyed. I don't really remember what was in this sort of location. Judging by over there, looks like we're missing maybe a bit of the cargo. Actually, not a very good shot, this. We've managed to hit one of the areas that there's not much important, but we've certainly torn through some engines and, as I said, straight the way through the ship. So I hope you guys like that one. I'm pretty proud of the VEL and how it's developed from the, the previous designs, kind of an iterative process, and the end result is something that's pretty small, and you've got to admit, does some pretty severe damage for something that's just launching chunks of heavy armor. Chunks of heavy armor that get ignored by turrets, for the most part. So I hope you did enjoy this one, guys. If you did, up in the workshop, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It really does help me in the channel out. And if you didn't, let me know down in the comments what I could do to improve. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.